One question that comes up over and over again is what do you use for filming your videos? Well, even though it is linked in the video description, like my street photography zines that you can pick up if you want to enjoy some cool street shots from various locations around the world. It also helps out the channel greatly to make more point of view street photography videos in the future. Before I show you my new setup and reveal my new camera and lens, let's talk about how it all got started and evolved from there. To some of you, it might seem very simple. Just slap an action camera on top of the camera you are shooting with and that's about it. Yes, that is basically how I did it in the beginning, but there's more to the story. When I started my channel, I was using this GoPro Hero 4 Session, mainly because it was very small and I already had it in my arsenal. Mounted on top of the camera, it delivered a very immersive first-person experience, because you could see the lens in the frame. The camera is small and lightweight, but it also had some major downsides. First of all, it has no interchangeable batteries. It shoots only 1080p, and overall, by modern standards, the overall image quality isn't that great. But the major downside of the camera is the lack of image stabilization. When shooting, I had to be very careful, otherwise the footage turned out way too shaky. For that reason, I upgraded to this here, the DJI Osmo Action. A camera that I've been using since the last 2.5 years, and it's great. However, after receiving the camera, I quickly realized that mounting the Osmo Action on top of my camera wouldn't be a great idea. Yes, you could still see the lens, but because of the image stabilization, the lens would move around in the frame and that looks really weird. The solution was to use a chest mount instead of mounting it on top of the camera and that worked very well, nothing to complain here. There's only a few things I don't like about the camera. Number one is the low light performance and the fact that the viewing angle on the Osmo Action is rather narrow when compared to other action cameras. And that is because there is a significant crop when using image stabilization. And also the image stabilization doesn't really work well in low light. Now, last year Instar360 launched their Go 2, which is a very tiny action camera that seemed very promising. It is so small and lightweight that you can stick it to this magnetic pendant that you can wear under your shirt and no matter which direction you mount it, the horizon is always straight. It's a nice little camera, but of course, due to its size, it has its limitations. The battery life, for instance, is very poor and will only last for around 25 minutes. It also has only internal storage up to 64 gigabytes. And for my style of shooting, it is only recommended to shoot up to 10 minutes due to overheating issues. For what I do, it's certainly not a good choice. However, as a second angle for some situations, it can be fantastic and that is mainly the reason I picked it up. In the last couple of videos that I put out, I was using a new camera, a new action camera that I can't show you because I had to return it because it was driving me crazy. All right, the camera I'm talking about is this Insta360 ONE R 1 inch edition. On paper, it sounded great and to be fair, the image quality is really good and especially in low light, it was a major step up. Maybe you have noticed that in some of the latest videos from St. Petersburg. But in one department, the camera is severely lacking and that is sound quality. The built-in mic is horrible. On top of that, you couldn't use an external mic while charging the camera at the same time because there's only one Type-C port available. My solution for those issues was to record sound separately to my phone and sync it later in post. Then there's also the fact that you can't really use the video files out of the box when you want the best image quality and stabilization. You have to run the files through the Insta360 software and that takes a lot of time, especially when you have hours worth of footage like I do. Because of all those annoying issues, I had to return the camera. Even though the image looks nice, it's really not for me. Now, I could have simply returned to my trusty old Osmo Action, but I wanted to try something else. It's not a typical action camera, but it has some nice features that could work very well for me. The DJI Osmo Pocket 2. It has a real gimbal, so the stabilization also works in low light and it has a fairly large sensor and a bright aperture of f1.8, so it should also look alright in low light. On top of that, it comes with a wireless mic that should give me some really good sound. I'm pretty sure it will have some downsides to it, but only time will tell. 
Okay, now you know what I mainly film my point of view videos with and for my intros and even some of these videos here, I use a Sony ZV-1. It is absolutely fantastic and especially when traveling, it's a great companion for filming videos. Now the moment you have all been waiting for, at least some of you I guess. Here's my new camera. No, it's not a Leica M11, it's a Fuji X-E4. That might come as a surprise for some of you, but in the past I had several Fuji cameras, starting with an X100S, then X-T1 and also an X-E1. But that was before I started this channel. More on the reasons I chose this over something else in a future video. Before ending this video, there's one more thing. Of course, since I don't have any Fuji lenses, I also needed one for the X-E1. I wanted a lens, a manual focus one, that comes with a native X mount. And for me, there was only one option and that comes from a company that I'm very familiar with. On top of that, I got an extremely good deal on it. It's this Voigtlander 35 f1.2. It is built very well and it's not the sharpest lens in the world, but besides that, it is sharp enough. It has character and that is something a lot of modern lenses are lacking. Now you might think that this is not his preferred focal length and you're right. It's true, but I already have a solution for that, but more about that in a future episode. Okay, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to check out my street photography scenes. And as always guys, if you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and we will see each other very soon in the next one. Until then, auf Wiedersehen.